Hello, I'm Anna Nakaris from Oxford Brookes University. In this video abstract, I'm going to be presenting to you the results of our research on a nocturnal primate called the slow loris and how they use their rare trait of venom in an extraordinary way in intraspecific competition. Slow lorises are unusual in that they have a venom that they produce from an oil in the brachial gland on their upper arm and saliva in their mouth. This is combined when the loris is threatened when it takes its arms up over its head, it clasps its arms tightly, combines the saliva and the brachial gland, and delivers the bite with very sharp teeth. The function of the venom has been virtually unknown, and for eight years we've been studying the critically endangered Javan slow loris in West Java, Indonesia, to try to understand why they use their venom. Animals have evolved a spectacular array of weapons, including pinchers, sprays, horns, tusks. These can be used in a variety of defensive ways. Males may defend females against invading males. Both males and females may defend against predators. And individuals of both sexes may use their weapons to defend a variety of resources, including foods, home ranges, and their offspring. Both natural and sexual selection may select for these traits in animals. Can toxins in mammals be a weapon? Very few mammals actually possess toxins. Uh, in the case of water shrews and selenodons, this may be for processing food or caching prey. In the case of vampire bats, it may help the animals to feed. And some mammals with toxins, they may defend themselves against predators. And uniquely in the platypus, they use their venom for intraspecific competition for the males only during the breeding season. The use of venom in interspecific competition is particularly rare, and this slide shows you some of the handful of taxa who use venom for this purpose. Slow lorises have a number of unique traits related to their venom system, from highly contrasting face masks to stripes that imitate snakes, but very interestingly are their powerful teeth and jaws which inflict horrendous wounds on other slow lorises. When a slow loris bites another slow loris, it leads to a diagnostic bite that is unlike the bite of another animal. These bites are often necrotic and they are one of the main causes of death in the pet trade, in rescue centers, and also in zoos. The question is, why do lorises bite each other? We tested two examples. Uh, female defense and re resource defense, and we looked at the amount of wounds and the territoriality as well as the fighting behavior between males and females. Well, the results showed that both males and females horrendously wound each other with 20% of animals throughout different captures showing wounds. These were significantly higher in males, especially during the period when they're dispersing and they're going to go off and find their own home range. Both sexes in slow lorises are highly territorial, with females being even more territorial than males, with no overlap of animals outside their family group. Both the core area and the overall home range showed incredibly low uh, overlap indices. In conclusion, we found that slow lorises are one of only five animal species to use venom for intraspecific competition. And this makes this a very rare example of a weapon used by males and females. 
If you'd like to find out more, you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or visit our website where we will be posting updates about lorises and their venom and how information about their venom can be used in the conservation of these critically endangered primates.